We've already seen that atoms that have unpaired electrons behave like tiny magnets. They have magnetic moment. However, not all materials that have, in fact, most materials that have atoms like these, they hardly behave like magnets. In fact, they only show very slight attraction to magnets and we called this phenomena paramagnetism. However, there are very few elements, in fact, four on the periodic table, iron, cobalt, nickel, and gadolinium, which show incredibly strong attraction to magnets. And they do have atoms that have unpaired electrons. So what's so special about these elements? By the way, this phenomena where they show incredibly strong attraction is what we call ferromagnetism. It's named after iron, ferrum, the first one where we saw this effect. So that's the big question. What's so special about these elements? All right, so let's first look at a paramagnet. Say we could look into a piece of aluminum. Aluminum is a paramagnet. It contains atoms that have magnetic moments that behave like tiny magnets. So the first question I have is, why doesn't a piece of aluminum itself behave like a magnet? Well, for that, we need to look at all the atoms. And what I'm gonna do is, for simplicity, to show the magnetic moment, to show the direction of the magnet, I'm just gonna draw an arrow mark over here, just for simplicity, all right? So if you could peek inside, you'd find that all these atoms are randomly oriented. These tiny magnets are randomly oriented. So all of their magnetic moments cancel out and you don't get anything. But now let's look at a piece of ferromagnet. Let's say we peeked into an iron. Imagine this is a piece of iron. What would we find over here? Well, here you would find something like this. Ooh, do you notice the difference? Well, first of all, you, here also you see groups of atoms can be randomly oriented, and as a result, the net magnetic moment can still be zero. Not all pieces of iron need to be magnet, right? But the speciality of ferromagnets is you can see these groups, and let me help you, know, let me help you see that. You can see groups of atoms, and there can be billions of them, that are all aligned in the same direction. That is the speciality of ferromagnets. What causes this? Well, it's gonna be a mystery for us because I looked at a lot of literature. It turns out we need to learn quantum mechanics for that. And we're not gonna do that in this video. So we're just gonna accept it. It's a quantum mechanical phenomena. But what's important is that they're doing it spontaneously. You don't need a magnet. You don't have to bring it close to a magnet. They spontaneously arrange themselves in groups that are all aligned together. And these groups, which have all aligned magnetic moments, we give a name to that, we call it magnetic domains. So that is the big difference between paramagnets and ferromagnets. Although at an atomic level, they look the same, they both have magnetic moments, at a macro level, you have magnetic domains inside these ferromagnets. Okay, so what do these magnetic domains do? Well, to answer that, now let's look at their behaviors in presence of an external magnetic field. Again, let's start with a paramagnet. What happens if I were to bring a giant bar magnet or if I were to somehow create a strong magnetic field outside? And just to make sure that you can see the atoms carefully, uh, properly, I'm just gonna make the magnetic field a little dim. All right, so you have a strong magnetic field to the right. What's gonna happen to these atoms? Well, we've seen before, the field tends to turn these atoms and align it in the direction of the field something like this. And how much it is able to align depends upon how strong the field is, and it also depends upon the temperature. If you have very high temperature, they're vibrating a lot, it becomes harder to align. But what you end up getting is you get some kind of a weak alignment. It's not very random now, um, but it's not completely aligned, but you get some kind of a weak alignment. And as a result of that, you can kind, you now see this bar of aluminum is slightly, slightly magnetized. This side being north, this side being south. And as a result, this will now get slightly attracted by the magnet. Okay, what happens over here? Well, here, when you bring a giant bar magnet, or if you have an external magnetic field, the effect is the same. It tends to turn these atoms and align them, but now it's not the atoms alone that turn, it's the entire domains that turn. So due to the field, maybe this entire domain will turn right and get aligned. And so now, in, in effect, you see that this, this domain got bigger. And if you make the field stronger, more domains get, get aligned completely. And eventually it's possible that all the domains get aligned in the same direction and you now have one giant magnetic domain where all the atoms are aligned in the same direction. 
As a result, this piece of iron is incredibly, incredibly strongly magnetized. And as a result of that, it shows very, very strong attraction. So the big difference is here, the alignment is super, super weak because you don't get the domains. You don't get that you know, quantum mechanical effect. But here, due to that quantum mechanical effect, all of these are aligning themselves together, almost perfect alignment, and that makes it an incredibly strong, incredibly strongly magnetized. Okay, what happens when I get rid of that magnet? Again, let's come back over here. If I get rid of that magnet, we've seen that there's no reason for these atoms to stay in that way. They will quickly go back to this random orientation and they would quickly lose whatever slight magnetism it had achieved. So paramagnetism is very temporary, weak and temporary. You can imagine these atoms to be extremely undisciplined. If there's no supervisor around, they just go back to being random and doing whatever they wanna do. What happens if you get rid of the magnet over here? Here, it really depends upon the crystal. You can have a piece of iron in which even after getting rid of that magnet, all of these atoms stay aligned. The entire magnetic domains stays at it as it is, and now we have a permanent magnet. These crystals are called hard magnets because they get very strongly magnetized and it's very hard to break their magnetism. Even without an external magnet, they stay aligned. But you know what? You can take iron itself and you can heat treat it and change its properties. And when you do that, what you find is after removal of the magnet, most of the domains would just go and flip back. And you would find in those crystals, you'd pretty much lose their magnetism. Such ferromagnets are called soft magnets, meaning they're not soft in the sense like a pillow, they're still hard, <laughs> but they're soft in the sense, you know, if you get rid of the external magnetic field, they immediately lose their magnetism. So hard magnets are used in building permanent magnets because they can retain their magnetism. On the other hand, soft magnets are useful as cores of electromagnet. Here, it's only when a current is running, you want that thing to get magnetized and produce very strong magnetic fields, right? But when the current stops, you don't want it to create magnetic fields, so you don't want the magnet to stay a magnet, right? So you want the magnetism to disappear. And so we use soft, soft ferromagnets over here. The final question is, does temperature affect the ferromagnetism? And it turns out it does. If you were to heat this piece of iron, and you heat it, say, above the temperature of 770 degrees Celsius, this is for iron, then it turns out that above this temperature, iron loses all of its magnetic domains, which means iron now has become paramagnet. It loses all of its ferromagnetic property. It becomes a paramagnet, and this temperature above which a ferromagnet loses its magnetic domains and becomes a paramagnet. We give a name to that temperature. We call it the Curie temperature. And I'll let you, you know, go and research who is this named after. Is it Marie Curie or her husband, Perry Curie? Okay, it's for you to do that. And here are the Curie temperatures of the four ferromagnetic elements. You can see iron and cobalt have a very high value and uh, nickel and gadolinium, gadolinium, look at that, it has a very low value. Your textbook shows, uh, you know, I think about 40 degrees or something, but a couple of literatures I checked, they show about 20 degrees, which means even at room temperature, gadolinium loses its ferromagnetic properties. But here's the thing, they will only lose their magnetism above the Curie temperature. But what happens if you cool them back below the Curie temperature? If you, go, if you cool iron back below 770 degrees Celsius, then, all of its magnetic domains are again spontaneously formed and it's back being a ferromagnet. So it might lose whatever magnetization it already previously had, but now it's ready to be magnetized again. So above Curie temperatures, they behave like a paramagnet, but you cool them below, they'll come back spontaneously aligned, magnetic domains are formed, they behave like a ferromagnet.